Once a year, thousands of sharks travel great distances to the frigid waters of Alaska. The sharks make the journey for a predestined encounter with the Pacific salmon. The salmon make their own heroic odyssey to spawn in their home waters to create the next generation. But first, they must outrun the explosive salmon shark, Alaska's icy killer. It is a David and Goliath battle when these two great migrations collide in one of nature's great spectacles. After a long, dark Alaskan winter, Prince William Sound welcomes spring. But every season here is adorned in ice. temperatures barely nudge above freezing. Yet cold does not mean lifeless. An astonishing richness of life flourishes in these subarctic waters. None is more astonishing than the salmon shark. A shark that not only survives, but thrives in this icy crucible. Weighing in at an impressive 225 kilos and growing to a length of around 3 meters, this shark flies through nearly frozen water. But sharks in Alaska? One of the shark's favorite prey, Pacific salmon, lure the sharks to the sound. The salmon come to spawn. The sharks come to eat. Once a year, the salmon shark and the salmon collide in an epic struggle. One runs on hunger, the other on urgency. Nothing less than the survival of its kind. And this is their Arctic arena. As Prince William Sound sits on the northernmost shores of the Gulf of Alaska, the waters of the Sound are cold year round. Over 1,600 species of birds, fish, and mammals earn their living in these food-rich waters. At the base of the food chain, microscopic plankton converts sunlight from the lengthening days of spring into a massive bloom of life, turning the water milky green. It's burst with the season's abundance. Animal 
Kings answer the summons of these ample waters. Among them, the Salmon Shark. It's May, and this Salmon Shark is gradually making her way towards Alaska, and the salmon that compel her journey there. She began her long solo odyssey to Prince William Sound a few months ago in the waters of California where she was born. She's been on her own since birth. Having had no parenting, she runs on instinct. She's now five years old and this is her first trip to Prince William Sound. It's a mystery how she will find her way. No one ever led the salmon shark here. It is somehow just hardwired for this journey. While the predators are coming to feast, the prey have a different, perhaps more compelling drive. To reproduce. has been sculpting this glacial seascape for the past two million years. With the coming and going of ice ages, glaciers have advanced and retreated, marking millennial time. It is this glacial artistry that creates the perfect spawning waters for salmon. Over time, ice sheets gouge out steep valleys that fill with seawater, creating fjords. Salmon must pass through these fjords to find their spawning grounds beyond them in the Sound's 1,100 freshwater mountain streams. The salmon sharks will seize this necessity for a predatory advantage, gathering in the fjords, standing between the salmon and the streams they must get to. The salmon shark is the fastest predator here. Of the roughly 400 known sharks in the world, this is the only large active shark equipped to ply these glacial waters. The shark will probably live to about 40 years old. She will journey to the sound for her share of salmon every spring. Mammals in the sound, spring is a time of learning. Mammals raise their young, giving them the enormous evolutionary advantage of being nurtured. Of protective mothers handing down their hard-earned lessons of survival. Neither sharks nor salmon have this edge. They are programmed rather than parented. Primal drive propels their journey to the sound. They travel 
on an inevitable path ever closer to their destination and each other. Because of the rigors of surviving here, every creature claims its own niche, its own strategy to survive in this icy world. But none is more keenly adapted to hunt these waters than the salmon shark. Even its more notorious cousin, the great white shark, rarely ventures into the icy waters that the salmon shark rules. shark's largest competitor here is not another shark but rather another apex predator the orca Two predators, the orca and the salmon shark, sharing the same glacial waters but leading such starkly different lives. One, a member of a lifelong, tightly knit pod of hunters. The other, a relentless loner. The sharks are here, just ahead of the salmon. Tens of millions of them are now closing in on Alaska's coastline. They ventured away from these waters a few years ago to spend their adult lives schooling in the open ocean. Yet every salmon coming here will die this summer. The only question is, which individuals will reach their spawning grounds and which will be caught in the powerful jaws of a great predator. Although humans only recently named the salmon shark, Nature perfected this exquisite hunting machine many millions of years ago. But how does it excel in seas too frigid for virtually every other shark? What happens when the salmon shark goes on the prowl? First, critical for hunting fast prey like salmon, the shark's body is streamlined, allowing her to cut through the water with minimal drag and maximum acceleration. Clever camouflage renders the shark practically invisible. Prey above fail to see her dark back. 
while prey below might mistake her light-colored belly for sky. As a hunt begins, the shark recruits its fine senses of smell and hearing. If a salmon is wounded, the shark will smell blood in the water or hear it thrashing. Along its sides, highly sensitive motion detectors, so-called lateral lines, sense water displacement from the smallest movement of the smallest salmon. Also, fish emit a very weak electric signal. The salmon shark can exploit this. Hundreds of tiny electroreceptors around its snout can detect as little as a millionth of a volt emitted by a salmon. As the shark goes in for a kill, the electroreceptors may help it hit its target. Even if the salmon gets a short reprieve, the salmon shark can reposition with incredible speed, thanks in part to highly flexible fins and a massively powerful tail. So how can the salmon shark perform at this level of excellence in ice-cold water? Since the vast majority of sharks live in much warmer climes, how does this one prosper here? The salmon shark has an unusual adaptation for surviving in this frigid world. And it's one that enhances every other ability this unique animal has. Amazingly, this fish is warm-blooded. This is an enormous advantage for hunting swift prey in cold water. Warm blood enhances speed, muscle power, and endurance. Everything this predator needs. But how does it retain its body warmth while immersed in icy water? The greatest threat to all warm-blooded animals here is heat loss. Hypothermia stalks the animals as lethally as any predator. Of course, there are the familiar ways of staying warm. Warm-blooded mammals, like sea otters, are clad in a fur coat made of up to 150,000 hairs per square centimeter. Otter must constantly groom this thick but easily matted fur to maintain its insulating properties. It also must maintain a high metabolic rate by eating up to a quarter of its body weight every day just to stay alive. Despite fur coats and high metabolisms, as many as three out of four of these otter pups will not survive their first year. The harbor seal employs a more passive method of staying warm, blubber. A seal pup is born with quite a bit of this insulating fat. But the pup will only have a 24-day suckling period to build enough blubber to maintain its body heat. The warm-blooded salmon shark has neither fur nor fat for insulation. Yet it can raise its body temperature more than any fish in any water. The internal temperature of most fish is nearly identical to the surrounding water. 
but not the salmon sharks. Its circulatory system has an unusual mechanism to keep this shark warm in ice cold water. As common literally leap in the air, as if preparing to flee a dangerous predator. But no one knows why the salmon spend precious energy doing this. Soon, they will need every bit of their strength. First, to escape the sharks, and then for the epic struggle to return to their breeding grounds, to mate for the one and only time in their lives. Glaciers of the Ice Ages carved the steep walls and U-shaped valleys that define the fjords. But the salmon cannot spawn in saltwater fjords. They must reach either freshwater streams or the intertidal zone where clear streams meet the salty sea. They must cross the shark-infested fjords to reach their spawning grounds. It's late July. The salmon gather in large schools, waiting for the rising tide to help propel them up the fjord. Although sharks have a reputation as primitive, they are brilliant hunters. Even if a shark misses on the first strike, it is so flexible and has such endless endurance that it literally runs circles around a fleeing salmon, churning a prison of water until the salmon simply gives up. are just beginning to understand the nature of these unusual sharks. When they converge in a skilled attack, it can look like a coordinated hunt, an organized ambush. But is it? Do they communicate? 
do they coordinate? Do these fish plot and plan? Other denizens of these waters are renowned collaborators. Behemoths who use sophisticated communication skills to hunt as a group. Humpback whales even make specific assignments to individuals within the hunting parties. Unlike the shark's hunting skills, these are not instinctive abilities, they are learned. In stark contrast to a salmon shark, a humpback mother will teach her calf how to hunt. As the calf grows and learns, it may participate in a spectacular humpback group hunting ritual, an awesome feat called bubble net feeding. Schools of herring attract the humpbacks, much in the way that the salmon lure the salmon sharks. The humpbacks dive under the fish, herding them into a tight ball. The pod leader signals the others to lunge to the surface. In unison, jaws agape. By working collaboratively, each whale can consume thousands of fish in a single gulp. Salmon sharks also hunt with each other, but in their case, proximity does not mean cooperation. Several sharks can strike at once, scattering the hapless fish, enabling each shark to pick off its own target. The sharks appear to have an instinctive understanding of their enhanced power when they work the same waters. A salmon fleeing one shark may fly into the jaws of another. But most biologists believe that the sharks do not coordinate their hunt in the same way that mammals like humpbacks do. The shark's evolutionary path started long before mammals roamed the earth. And their ancient design is one of evolution's greatest successes. They predate the earliest known dinosaur by more than 200 million years. Yet the shark endures as one of nature's oldest predators. Sharks and mammals have, of course, followed very different evolutionary strategies. In Prince William Sound, as elsewhere, some mammals have morphed their bodies through time. Stellar sea lions probably evolved from a bear-like land-based creature 20 million years ago. In fact, their rear flippers turn forward, allowing them still to walk on land. After a fashion, Unlike their fellow predator, the salmon shark, sea lions are territorial. A bull establishes his turf and will fight to defend it. The bulls do not eat during mating season, so size does matter.
The bigger the bull, the longer he can fast. Less time foraging, more time mating. The gregarious bull's personal success and that of his endangered species depends on maximizing mating opportunities. Unlike the sea lions, the salmon sharks are not endangered and they don't miss a meal in order to reproduce. They will mate in summer and into fall. As fall eclipses summer, the days become shorter, darker. The sharks seem to hunt more frequently at the surface without the risk they run on brighter days of burning their sensitive eyes. This seemingly ruthless predation appears to threaten the salmon species. The ravenous shark is actually improving the health of the salmon population. By thinning out the less robust fish, it's allowing stronger genes to be passed on at spawning. So despite their hearty appetites, the sharks are good for the salmon species. Salmon who have successfully eluded the sharks navigate to the intertidal zone where seas and rivers merge towards the freshwater streams where life for most of these salmon begins and ends. They have come hundreds of kilometers and are so close to fulfilling their purpose here. Yet their most critical mission still lies ahead past another alley of daunting predators. August in Prince William Sound. More than a hint of fall is already in the air. The surviving salmon have an even more urgent need to make it to their spawning grounds. Rather than dying in the jaws of a shark, it might be their own nature that will kill them. The fresh water of the mountain streams is already taking its toll. It's now only a matter of a few days before they will all perish. The salmon must overcome their waning strength to make it to the waters of their birth. Even as the salmon leave the saltwater domain of the salmon sharks, they are still in danger. At every bend in the stream, another predator stalks them. It's the salmon's curse to be so nutritious. Brown bears need enormous stores of fat for their impending hibernation. These one-year-olds can now catch their own fish. But a year ago, they were suckling in the den, taking mother's milk enriched by salmon fat.
eaglets eating salmon add about half a kilo to their body weight every few days. While other black bears are devouring hundreds of salmon, this bear is focused on only one fish he caught before she could release her eggs, which by now weigh about half a kilo. The bear forgoes the meat of the fish and, with the precision of a sushi chef, removes just the roe for a bit of caviar. Fortunately for the salmon species, others will make it further. for the best spots to deposit their eggs. With a wave of her tail, the female salmon makes a gravel nest for her eggs and releases them. The male then fertilizes their potential offspring. Just as the salmon sharks stalked the salmon, others will hunt their offspring. A giant lion's mane jellyfish joins a troop of moon jellies. These magnificent creatures may seem benign. They are, in reality, a navy of hungry predators, a gelatinous flotilla feeding on tiny salmon eggs and lava. While some salmon have already spawned and died, Others are still making their way to their spawning grounds. Each river has its own timing, allowing fish access to their home waters without competition from other salmon trying to get to theirs. Nature cleverly staggers the salmon's schedule, accommodating the salmon shark's infinite appetite. But if, for some reason, the salmon never ran again, salmon sharks would not vanish along with them. The sharks would simply forage for other fish, as they do when the salmon are not running. There is a reason that sharks have survived for over 400 million years. By September, most of the salmon are dead. As the salmon disappear, many of the sharks leave the sound, making their way to warmer waters where some will give birth to the next generation of salmon sharks.
With the arrival of winter, Prince William Sound will cloak itself in a different sort of splendor. No matter the season, there is magic in this icy cauldron of life. Wizardry that commands creatures from thousands of kilometers away to come here.